Ooh, boy. Uh, the timing of this cup just really came at an unfortunate time. I kind of got burnt out of Pokemon right after Suicune Day, to put it lightly. And I felt like it kind of affected my gameplay going into the tournament itself. I guess my team comp was okay. But there's just way too many situations where I'm so used to the mindset of not using a Pokemon against a Pokemon. Unless I have the super effective advantage both from offense and defense. That I guess it backfire a bit in the battlings I've done. So I'm not really going to commentate these battles. In fact, I got this whole tournament squeezed into this one particular video because it's... I don't have too much to say about it. I wasn't happy with my team comp, I wasn't happy with how I played. And I wasn't really feeling too good that day of the tournament. So it just kind of made for a pretty ugly combination overall, so instead of actually commenting the gameplay, I'm going to have this battle commentary be more of a focus of a retrospective of the past year of Sylph League. In addition to my plans to the future, now that the, as far as I can tell, the cup themes are over. Cause yeah, I've been looking so forward to seeing what was going to be September's theme here, only to find out that mm, they're kind of done with the cup themes for the rest of the year. And honestly, that was left me a little bit disappointed because I didn't really find. As much as I praised the Great League, I didn't even find the generic, original Great League rule set too interesting. Part of the fun with doing competitive PvP was just how the typings were different every month. Sure, it's a real annoying with the Stardust investment, but... But it really helped make things more interesting. I know if only for the sake of videos, it definitely makes things more unique to have a different theming of my Pokemon types every single month. So I'm not going to say I'm not going to be attending any more tournaments for the rest of the year, but it's not looking too strongly at the current state of moments. And what really sucks was I didn't even get a chance to do anything with the Rainbow Cup. I did decide to host my own Rainbow Cup tournament closer to my local area to throw some geography that I normally don't share. Typically I go, typically I play because I live around the western New York area, so the closest tournaments to me are up in Buffalo, which is about an hour away from where I live. And the reason I bring all that up was I actually cancelled my own tournament. I was going to do a Rainbow Cup. But at the last minute, I just realized I didn't have the time to commit to it. Or at least I didn't think I had the time to commit to it. But then I realized after I canceled it that it was a holiday. And after that, I realized that that would have been my last chance to really have an official rank tournament themed. So that kind of bit me in the butt more than I would have liked. So I'm not sure if I'll do anything with the Rainbow Cup in the future. I'd like to, but outside of a tournament, where am I going to find the people to do that sort of thing? That's what it really boils down to. And the current restrictions in Pokemon Go just kind of make that difficult, because I take my friends list a bit more literally than most people, so I'm a bit hesitant to just add random strangers just to have battle partners. There have been like some tournament leagues pop up in discords. I'd probably do that before just inviting anyone that follows me to battle. Only because I at least know some of those people a little bit more. But part of my hesitation with that was just the fact that I don't know the majority of the community. And while that's a similar case of doing tournaments in person, there's at least the whole concept that I don't have to add them all to my friends list and have to worry about getting enough gifts to give like 50 people, 30 people gifts a day because 
I work a full-time job, so a lot of times I don't get enough gifts to actually give people stuff every day, and plus I still want to actually give fr gifts to my friends to try to get lucky friends with them and stuff like that. It just The present not concept kind of makes things overwhelming, so it'll be interesting to see how the rumors and speculation with official rank matching works in Pokemon Go. I'm not going to go into the full details because it involves data mining, but there's been data mines done, I'll say that, and the vagueness that is in the data mines does lead for some potential in future PvP stuff. So the overall encompassing point is that I'm just not sure yet what's going to happen to the Pokemon Go slot I had for Fridays. I was just getting used to weaning away from vlogs and doing PvP, and now I just don't know if I have the incentive or inspiration to actually make PvP content. I still have all my Jungle Cup recordings, so assuming I actually remember what happened in those battles, I can at least keep battling content going for a little while, but I'll just have to look into things, figure out what I actually want to do, because I do see potential in some of the other things like Great League if I don't have to invest any more Stardust, I guess I could try around or that, because the people in local areas, or at least the Buffalo areas, are going to still have tournaments I'm pretty sure. So I might as well at least see what that's like. I'm a little hesitant to jump into the Master Leagues because... There, I feel like there's a lot more Stardust investment in Master League compared to other leagues. I see the argument because... With Master League, there's no CP restrictions, so a lot of the quote-unquote complicated stuff that would require people to raise different Pokemon for Great League than they would use in a raid. That's all gone with Master League, so the Pokemon in Master League are very similar, if not the same as what you would use for a raiding. But so many of them are like high class Pokemon like Tyranitar, legendary Pokemon. Things that take a lot of candy and Stardust to get a second move. And I would argue take a lot to power up as well. But thing like a thing like an Azuril would take just as much to power up as a Mewtwo. Or should I say Azuril in the Great League in comparison to a Mewtwo in the Master League? However, it's that cost for a second charge move slot that really kills me. And with legendary Pokemon, you often have to use your rare candy. You're not going to have like a surplus of Azuril candy just lying around. If the areas that are holding tournaments insist on doing Master League though, maybe I'll try it around and just not worry about the second charge move even though I know I will fail without it. I'm not going to shoot down the idea of taking part in some of these other ranks until I at least give it a shot. I'm just not feeling very good about it at the moment. But I guess, even if I don't do tournaments anymore, that doesn't mean that Pokemon battling is not an option for the channel anymore. I have been itching to just like do more fun battles with friends, maybe like make some crazy rules that even it out. So I don't just bring my OP Great League Pokemon when they're just using things that hit the 1500 mark or something like that. So there's going to be a lot of room of experimentation around the channel. Oh yeah, there's also the point of trying to put time aside and working around other people's schedules to actually do that sort of thing. That's the only reason I haven't done that sort of thing more often. <laughs> It'd just be a shame to drop Pokemon Battling from YouTube when it just feels like I just got in the hang of actually doing it for everyone. It actually feels like it works better for my content than the Pokemon Go vlogs I used to do. Mostly because Game & Chill is a thing now, so if I want to talk about my excursion in Pokemon Go, I can just talk about it when, during that when I'm talking about my day anyways. And actually get some unique gameplay in, because the thing with the Pokemon Go vlogs, because I'm the type of person that doesn't like to show their face, I just grew up with commentators that never got into that sort of style, and it stuck around with me 
plus I'm more of a shy person anyways. So I don't think face cam vlogging in general is ever going to be a major thing with me. So I just left the Pokemon Go vlog with me catching the same Pokemon over and over, occasionally showing casing a shiny and pictures. I have other avenues for pit showcasing pictures if I really want to. So stay tuned. I got a little time left before I completely run out of battle videos and need to come up with a new plan for what to do for the, the Pokemon battling slot. I just don't want to drop Pokemon Go content from the channel completely. And while I am trying to be more consistent with things like the podcast and that, I feel like there's room for something more visual as well. I'll have updates especially on Twitter as I work around the details and come up with a more solid game plan. Hopefully I know there wasn't really too much interesting in the commentary for this one. Maybe the battles were interesting, if only to see how not to battle in Twilight Cup. <laughs> Either way, I really appreciate you guys taking the time, if only to hear me borderline rant, borderline talk about Pokemon Go PvP as of late, and try to plan out what the heck I'm going to do with this slot now that the special Silk Cup leagues are not a thing. Because it's not like it's illegal to do them anymore, I just know that people aren't going to be hosting those types of tournaments when they're not the thing in the spotlight. Because like, even Sylph League has the option to do unranked cups for pretty much any Sylph League that's been in the past, and I do appreciate that a lot. Tangent aside though, yeah, there's a lot I gotta sort out yet, and I appreciate you all just riding the tide with me. Until the next time we meet though, take care.